Hello guys and gals, Buffalo here. Welcome back to the range. You've seen the thumbnail, you've probably read the title. You know that today we're taking a look at a Smith & Wesson Model 41. I've got it right here in this case. I remember the first time that I ever heard of or saw a Smith & Wesson Model 41. I was in the seventh grade. We had a teacher named Mr. Prater. He was a science teacher and he had some of his older gun magazines. He brought them in. And us kids, when we finished an assignment early or finished a test early and we were waiting on the rest of the class to finish up, we could grab one of those gun magazines like Guns and Ammo, the print magazines, and we could flip through it and kind of daydream about all the firearms in there. One of those magazines had, a, had an article on the Smith & Wesson Model 41 in it. And I just happened to pick that magazine up and I was flipping through it and it had the, a full page picture in that magazine of a Smith & Wesson Model 41 and about three pages of a written article along with it. I read the entire article. If you guys have never read those print magazines, man, those gun writers can make a turd of a gun sound phenomenal. So you can imagine, they really lay it on thick. So you can imagine how they make something like this sound. And it just, uh, just perked my ears up and from then on I wanted one. I even took that that color photo, one of the reasons I remember this so well, I tore that photo out of the magazine real carefully and taped it onto my school notebook for that year. So my seventh grade class, I had a Smith & Wesson Model 41 on the cover of my notebook for the entire year almost until I, until I filled that notebook up. But anyway, it's, uh, that's been well over 30 years ago. I finally got one. It, it took me a long time. I grew up very poor. These guns are very expensive. You guys that in the comments section of my last video with the Ruger LCRX 22 long rifle who were freaking out because the MSRP on that was nearly $700 and you were saying there's no way you ever pay that for a 22 pistol or revolver in that case. Well, this thing's about twice that. The MSRP on this pistol I looked at it today before I came down here to do this video. It's $1,409. So, uh, very expensive for a 22 pistol, but it's purpose built. You know, it's, it's a competition pistol. It's meant for shooting precision, you know, bullseye shooters and stuff like that. Shooting tiny little X rings, tiny little groups on paper. That's its, that's its single job to shoot very, very accurately, very with very a lot of precision so uh, I bought this one back in January of this year 2021 this is the first time I've shared it on a video with you guys got a very good deal on it I had done some trading uh, made made a pretty good amount on another gun so I came out really good ahead on it and I just kind of chalked that up over onto this thing as uh, just like I broke even, so I don't have a whole lot in this pistol. Um, it's hard to put a value on the trading and stuff I done, but I don't have a whole lot in this thing compared to what they they typically go for about twelve hundred, thirteen hundred dollars in the store. Like I say, MSRP is over fourteen hundred. But here's a look at it. Thought I'd show this to you guys. Smith and Wesson started production on these in 1957. Now, they were actually designed 10 years prior to that. They were in the design phase from just right after World War II. But they, they began production in 57 and produced them continuously, unbroken, up until 1992 when Smith & Wesson dropped them from their catalog. But that didn't last long, thankfully. They brought them right back in 1994 and they're still being produced today. Any of the pistols produced from 94 till currently are commonly referred to as the new model 41. So this would be referred to as a new model 41. Current models are available with either a five and a half inch barrel or a seven inch barrel. I chose the five and a half for the balance factor. Now, if you wanna get the most out of your sight radius, you'd probably go with that seven inch model. They're also offered in a performance center model. So you can get it in the, the Performance Center package. Now over the years, you know, I, I'm not a historian on these at all, but they offered uh, several different barrel lengths and uh, offered them with 
muzzle brakes. Uh, they even made a 22 short model. I think it was called the 41-1. Don't hold me to that. Uh, just kind of going off the top of my head here on things that I've read over the years. But just an icon of a pistol. As far as ammunition goes with this pistol, I shoot almost exclusively CCI standard velocity. That's what I'll be shooting in today's video. And pretty much all I shoot in it. It seems to like it. It runs well. I will occasionally get a misfeed or something, but it's, it's, it's very rare. And shoots it accurately. I've got my, my sights are zeroed to this ammunition. So pretty much what I stick with. A good pistol like this, you need to feed it good ammunition. And if you do a lot of research online about these pistols, you'll find that a lot of people swear by CCI ammunition. Maybe not the standard velocity, but CCI in general seems to run pretty well on these pistols. I've got an 8 inch steel target hanging out there at 50 yards. Tell you what guys, this thing makes that look way too easy. Since I did buy this pistol brand new, I'll show you what all it came with here. Obviously you've got your Smith & Wesson hard case. Got the dual locks up front. Keep all my paperwork back here. I've got my receipt, my warranty information, my uh, owner's manual. Of course it comes with your standard bicycle lock, cable lock. Come with two 10 round magazines. These are steel magazines. Seem to be very well made. Got the thumb assist on the side for easy loading. You can see they're stamped Smith & Wesson. There on the bottom. Came with a little chamber flag. And here's the pistol itself. Make sure we're clear. We are. These things are just a work of art. Beautiful pistols. We'll start with the sights. The rear sight is fully adjustable for both the elevation and windage. This is your elevation adjustment. It does have the micrometer clicks, so you get a good firm click every time you go one way or the other. Same on the windage. That's your windage adjustment here. Front sight is a Patridge style sight. It is undercut. You can see that helps reduce glare. You'll hear me say that quite a bit. The rear sight is also it's a square notch. You also notice that it is serrated. That helps reduce glare. And the gun is serrated along the top. That's also suppo supposed to help reduce glare, keep that glare out of your sight picture. You'll also notice that the gun is drilled and tapped be very easy to throw a rail on here put your favorite optic on here i may try an optic later on right now i'm just going to stick with these iron sights they are so very nice controls are similar to where you'd find them on a on a 1911 government model you got your safety here safety is a little stiff the gun is new slide catch or slide release since the gun does have last shot hold open that comes in handy magazine release exactly where you would expect to find it this laminated wood grip is at the same grip angle as a 1911 so uh, a lot of familiarity here with the 1911 pistol and none of these controls are ambi they're not reversible and they're not ambidextrous. This is set up for a right-handed shooter. Now, a lot of southpaws, they'll learn to shoot right-handed guns and not have a problem with it. But I did want to mention that nothing on this gun is set up for a left-handed shooter. There's a look at the mag wheel. You can see beveling around that laminate grip. 
The trigger on this thing measures almost three eighths of an inch wide. It's 365 thousandths of an inch from one side to the other. Very wide trigger. That trigger breaks very crisp and clean. We'll put it on a scale here in a minute and see what it's pulling. But the pull's not the only thing that matters. <laughs> it's a very clean trigger. I haven't even put it on the scale yet, but I'll do it in this video. Other than the wood grips, it's all carbon steel construction. The frame, the slide, the barrel, everything's carbon steel. Got that nice blued finish. Very good looking gun. Uh, now the finish, the blue's not as good as on some of the older examples I've seen, but the processes have changed and regulations and stuff on how they do it have changed. It's still, it's still a high quality bluing. Functionally, this is a simple blowback operated, single action, internal hammer fired pistol. It does have last shot hold open. It also has a magazine disconnect safety, which means the pistol cannot be fired unless a magazine is inserted. This is a point where in most of my other videos, you'll hear me talk about my disdain for magazine disconnect safeties. However, on a pistol like this, that's meant for range use, it's really not that big of a deal. There it went. All right, so I just put a empty case in the chamber just to cushion the blow from the firing pin. Something I like to do with my rim fires. I don't, I don't feel comfortable dry, fire, dry firing my rim fires. Take it off safe. We'll do a trigger scale pull here this is the first time I've done this I don't know what it even pulls it's like two pounds ten ounces and that's from the factory I haven't touched it haven't touched it up or anything or adjusted it so pretty nice trigger and it and it is a nice feeling trigger you'll hear me say that probably several times a very crisp breaks very clean I told you guys we'd weigh the gun here. It is all steel construction, so it does make some heft on the pistol. But for the type of shooting that it's meant to do, that's looked at as an advantage. So gun with an empty magazine, 46.2 ounces. Take down for maintenance is super easy on these. You just start by removing your magazine, lock the slide back to the rear, come over the top with this hand and pull down on your trigger guard. And the reason you come over the top with this hand is so your barrel doesn't fall off on you. That's how easy these things are to take down. Here's your barrel. Again, this is the five and a half inch barrel. You can actually if I wanted to, I could buy the seven inch barrel and just swap them whenever I wanted to. Either barrel will fit and the sights are on the barrels themselves so I don't have to re-zero every time I change the barrel. Just goes in on that lug right there and locks in. See that recessed target crown there. If you want to take the pistol down further, just pull the slide to the rear pick up on it and let it come forward. So here's the slide. See that outstanding machine work? Just a beautiful piece. Then your recoil spring and guide rod. And that's, that's about as far 
is you'll want to take this down for any kind of cleaning or maintenance that you want to do. You can see the hammer here, that internal hammer. Very simple. Uh, for a gun designed in the 40s, kind of ahead of its time on takedown there, put your, the frame has a divot here. That's where your guide rod will sit. Spring goes over top of it. There's a hole here cut out in the slide for the spring. Put that up in here. Bring the slide over the top. Let it drop back down. Now lock the slide back. And this is hard for me to see through the viewfinder, but you'll just drop the barrel in just like that and close your trigger guard up, ready to rock and roll. Also, I think I forgot to mention earlier, there's an adjustable trigger over travel stop in the back of this trigger guard. You can adjust that out to decrease your trigger over travel or in to increase it, but this one is set very well from the factory. There's hardly any over travel, if any, at all on that trigger. So I mentioned that this grip angle is the same as on a 1911. However, these target grips that Smith & Wesson put on these pistols do give it a little bit of a different feel. It's a very thick grip, very hand filling. You've got a shelf on this side for your trigger finger to rest, a shelf on this side for your thumb. This grip is optimized for one-handed shooting. Now, when I shoot with two hands, with this grip, I feel like my support hand has to be a little bit lower than what I would normally shoot. But I don't mind that. This is not a trainer pistol for a larger version in center fire or anything like that. This is a standalone pistol, so I don't mind shooting a, a different style of pistol. <laughs> All right, so you heard a couple misses in there. The downside to owning a pistol like this is when you miss, you don't have any excuses. It's, don't, it's you, you're not doing your part. So a couple times there, I didn't do my part. Hold up here, we got some turkeys on the range. I'm gonna give them a few minutes to move on through. Okay, so I was going to sit down at the bench and shoot some groups on paper at 25 and at 50 yards, but I think I'm going to save that for a part two video. I've already ran this video so long, my analytics show that after about eight or nine minutes, people start uh, leaving the video anyway. So uh, if you're still here this far into the video, I appreciate you watching. Thanks for tuning in. This pistol would be great. For somebody wanting to get into some precision rimfire shooting, maybe shoot a few matches, uh, maybe maybe get into some serious matches. Also be great for just anybody that wanted to take their recreational plinking game to the next level. That's, that's kind of what I do. I'm, I'm a recreational shooter. But this pistol is more than that to me. This kind of represents going full circle. I wanted this thing since I was a kid, and now I finally brought that all the way around. I never thought that I would be able to to afford a 22 pistol like this. And here I am holding it all this time later. So uh, it's gonna be an heirloom pistol for me. Uh, a lot of pride in, of ownership in a pistol like this and I plan on passing it down to my, to my son or my grandkids or my great grandkids, you know. Hopefully one of them might end up shooting some matches with it one day and, and think about old great granddad. But I do wanna thank my Patreon supporters. Without you guys, these videos wouldn't be possible. That Patreon link is always in the description if anybody wants to join over there. Um, I really appreciate it. It helps a lot. But that's all I got, so I'll talk with you guys again soon.